Well, I'm Sean Van Sommer. I'm the executive director here of the Pelagic Shark Research Foundation. We're a 501c3 nonprofit research ad education and advocacy group, and we formed in 1990. Uh, our team uh, conducts a long term monitoring study here in the Slough Reserve, as well as periodically in the main channel, and we also conduct a survey of the open ocean pelagic sharks of the marine canyons. As well, we conduct a long term monitoring program up at the Ani Nuevo Island with white sharks during the fall and winter. So uh, that's what we do, and this is one of our three full-time projects. And uh, the importance of it is not only just academic and general interest, public education, but then it's you know this information is very vital to management and conservation efforts. Shovel nose guitarfish. They're uh, the largest animal we get here at this part of the slough. Very interesting. Not a lot of research done on them and uh, everyone's really interested in them. So the dorsal fins are placed well back on the animal, somewhat different from sharks. And its overall format and structure is similar to, uh, to both sharks and rays. In fact, it both has wings as well, propelled itself with the tail. And uh, a specialist for really shallow water environments. Really good eyes that retract into the head as well. And somewhat reminiscent of cephalopods like squids and octopus. Very sensitive as well. So, Robert, and she uses this big uh, flat nose to scan the bottom and look for food. As well, these animals, a lot of them appear to be pregnant to us, being touched by the bulging, distended stomach. So here's the gills here, here's the mouth, and the naris, which is used for smell, not for breathing so much. Uh, that's the difference between naris and nostril. You see the teeth here, specialized for crushing up stuff. And as well, you can see little pits. There's the uh, cloaca. These little uh, pits around here, little lines there, that's the electrical sensory apparatus. Also helps them to uh, tr find animals that are hidden in the, in the uh, sets in the mud. As well, it's very interesting, the uh, snout on these guys is uh, kind of translucent. You can see through it. And we don't know if that plays in a, some, some uh, role in their ability to find animals, but it's interesting that it's allowing light. You can see my hand right through the snout. So it's quite interesting there. These are spiracles, which is good. It can breathe, continue to breathe and percolate water when it's uh, buried in, dug in to the seds. And as well here, you can see the really fine details there. Those are also electrical receptors. And as well, it's got a lateral line system that is very sensitive to just vibration. So this animal has very keen eyesight, very specialized for murky waters. If you look at the uh, pupils there, it's also, like I say, very reminiscent to an octopus or one of the cephalopods. And uh, so a keen sense of smell, uh, an electrical sensory and magnetic sensory organ, organ, and as well the lateral line vibration movement. So this is a, a very ancient type of animal. There's fossils of these things that go back over 100 million years, and they're relatively unchanged in all that time, which makes them really, really interesting. So uh, this type of tidal estuary area is a very stable type of environment terms of the fossil record because animals that have been frequenting it have uh, changed relatively little despite a lot of different uh, effects on the environment you know mass extinctions there have been several so uh, they're interesting for a number of reasons uh, not only just that they're important and interesting to look at but you know they're they're a long-lived species long-term resident of the planet And here we have a leopard shark. Leopard sharks are in the slough throughout the year. They are most common in the spring and summer. Uh, and it is a very valuable environment to a number of different generational categories of leopard sharks, uh, including uh, pregnant females and newborn young. So we're convinced that they use the slough for reproductive purposes as well. And of course it's a relatively safe area for all the different generational categories. And there's a lot of food for all these different generational categories. Over time we hope to map out the slough and index its uh, assemblage of species and maybe figure out how they're using particular parts of the slough throughout the year for particular purposes. And uh, we kind of look at the slough as a shark and ray factory. And so the more we know about this slough and the animals in it, the better we can uh, understand and protect them. Do we have 
we have uh, blank tags yeah. and yeah. or number coded? Blank. Okay, everyone sees that band of muscle right there? We always want to avoid that, just blow it. Check it here. No blood, <laughs> no twitch. 